One of the first problems you're going to have to solve when you first get your Raspberry Pi is what do I put it in? Am I going to build an arcade cabinet? Am I going to refurbish one? What am I going to do with it? I can't get the full arcade experience with this type of controller. So maybe I start out building a one player such as this unit. Or maybe I want to expand a little bit more and add a USB port on the right hand side so I can easily plug in a spinner or a keyboard or even a trackball. Well, what if I want to go even further? Well, here we go. A two player unit or three or four. If you really want to go that crazy with it, I guess you could. Introducing OpenCade, the 3D printed solution that's highly configurable and I'm going to show you how to build it right now. Before we start discussing how to assemble the case, let's first take a look at what the 3D model looks like. Now keep in mind you can go to wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash opencade to always get the latest files and documentation. But let's go ahead and start with the base. This is the base most people will most likely want to start out with. It offers you the ability to put in the Raspberry Pi here. You'll notice these four standoffs. And there's four standoffs over here for the encoder for the joystick. It also provides you with two buttons on the front and holes on the side for expansion and then of course a cutout here for the HDMI of your Raspberry Pi plus your power access as well as the audio access. Okay so now let's say we want to add the control panel so we'll go ahead and add the control panel this is the standard control panel that comes with the package. You just download this entire set and print the control panel in this layout and you can install your buttons. Now let's say for whatever reason we don't want to use these two front uh, holes for buttons. You can also have the option of picking the box that has no holes. It's identical in design to the rest of the box with the exception is that you have no hole cutouts here. So you have that option as well. One thing I also want to point out is you have a lot of options with OpenCade. For instance, this notch in the top, you can use that to route the cable to your USB encoder that's installed directly into the box. So you could install this or set this up without a Raspberry Pi inside if you just want to build an external controller box. You can certainly do that as well. So don't think you have to install it. If you do, I'd recommend wrapping some electrical tape along the inside to make sure there's no stress on the uh, internal encoder board. Another option that you have that's available to you is this blank plate. The only thing that's installed here are really the screw holes and the location for the joystick but you can arrange the buttons in any way you want using whatever software you want to cut the holes through the control panel. So again, this is included in the project file that you download from Thingiverse and certainly you can customize it however you want. That is, if you don't want to use the provided control panel with all the buttonholes. Now, I mentioned a little bit about expandability, right? Well, the way you expand it is through this side port here. Basically, you run all the wires through here from one box to the next. And, of course, you could chain as many as you want. Um, who knows what type of attachments will be available in the future. I actually have a few ideas in mind, but I'll save those for a future video. Now, let's kind of stick with what's included in this package. And one of them is you may want to put a side cover on. Maybe you don't want to do anything right now. Maybe you just want to cover that hole up so nothing gets spilled in there. Well, you can print another one and put it here. They're identical in dimensions, so there's not a left or right. You just print one and put it on whatever side you want. 
you can install this USB plate that allows you to put in a female USB cable. And let's take this control panel off so you can see it a little better. And essentially you'll slide it in here and there's this tab mechanism that will allow it to stop at this point. And you put a little bit of hot glue in there. Yeah, we'll get into that in a little bit. But basically you can make this assembly and then plug it directly into your Raspberry Pi and the cable is going to stay stationary in that location. All right, so let's go back to our control panel. Let's say we want to turn this into a two-player configuration. Now there's a couple ways we could do it. We could print another base and screw it in directly into these holes, which is quite all right. That's the way I did it and it works great. It's very stable. Uh, another option is you could just print a side adapter if you want to put a little bit of space because the person next to you has a bad odor and you want a little more room or a little more elbow room, you can do that. And then you can also print your second base and wire everything up, all your buttons, your joysticks, and connect to a single Raspberry Pi, either over here or over here, whichever one you want. Okay, so that pretty much covers the 3D model aspect of it. Let's go ahead and get started with the actual build. All right, so here we are printing the base and now the control panel. It'll take a little while for these components to get printed up, but once you're done, you'll be ready to start assembling. Here's what the base looks like. Of course, I selected the one that has the two buttons on the front. Go ahead and open the Raspberry Pi and insert our micro SD card that's running RetroPie. I'll put a link up above with a video of where you can download and install RetroPie. Okay, now we're taking a look at the base and now we're installing the Raspberry Pi to the very back. I use M2 screws in order to secure the Raspberry Pi to the standoffs that are at the back of the case. In this case, I just used two. You can use all four if you want. Here's the encoder board. Oh, smash that light. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go ahead and put the encoder in and go ahead and put in the two M2 screws for that board as well. We don't want it moving around on us. There we go. Just about done. Yep, make sure it's good and tight, and it is. Nice, that looks pretty cool. All right, now we'll go ahead and plug in the USB cable into the encoder. Well, this cable is kind of long, so you probably want to cable tie it up and go ahead and put it into the USB port on the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, I've got a cable tie around mine. Keep it good and tight and kind of out of the way. Good deal. All right, so now we'll go ahead and install the joystick assembly. Notice the little port there. We want it towards the inside where the buttons are. That's to make sure it's easier to access when we go ahead and install everything. We'll go ahead and put an M3 screw in. I'll leave links for all this stuff in the description below so you know what kind of screws that you need and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you can find a lot of it at the local hardware store, but it may be easier to just order it online. All right, so now we're going to put the nuts on here and secure it very tightly. You don't want this one to move around. Actually, you don't want any of them to move around, but that one, <laughs> you definitely don't want your joystick moving around. And also make sure that it's centered very good in the plastic there before you tighten it all the way. Just a little tip. Now we'll put the little joystick cover on. And we'll screw the ball on. Pretty easy, huh? So far, right? This is an optional step. It's something I like to do in all my builds. 
I've got uh, a sheet on the Wag Wagner's Tech Talk website where you can download this. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to cut them out, trim them up, and this is a sheet of label stock so it is sticky on the back and it will secure nicely to the buttons. And after you cut them all out, you can open the button using a small jeweler's screwdriver, like I'm doing here. Just pop it out, peel off the backing, and affix it to the button cap there. And then just snap it in, like so. And we'll take the button and pop it in all the way make sure everything's lined up and it should lock into place again there we go good deal and then of course you repeat that for all the buttons that you have and of course this kit has 10 buttons so we'll do that and screw the button in make sure pushes fine and it's good and tight all right let's do all the rest of them of course I'm speeding it up a little bit because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and wait for 15 minutes while I do it all right so uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put the back nut on the start button and this is the little white caps now we're gonna move on to wiring up the buttons you want to look at your manufacturer's diagram. Notice the red in the lower left, yellow in the top left, and then the two black wires or ground wires go on the other side. If you look real closely, at least on my button kit, it makes a crown symbol. So the red button goes in the bottom left of the crown, and the yellow in the upper left, and then the two black wires, it doesn't matter which one you plug in where. And you repeat that for all the buttons in your control panel. I know it looks like a mess, but <laughs> it's just, just the way it is. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do the buttons for the front of the unit. Same thing, red, yellow, and then the two black wires. Now we'll slide the cable into the assembly of the base, throw the nut down through there, and tighten it up. Make sure it's all lined up. Screw it in, good and tight. And that looks good. Buttons all work. Alright, so now all that's left is let's plug these cables into the encoder board. And the first time you do it, it at least on mine, it was a little bit tight. Uh, after I removed it once or twice, it was much easier to put in the second time around. Uh, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. Alright, so we'll go ahead and take all the rest of the wires for the controller and go ahead and plug those in. You just want to pay attention to the notch. Also plug in the joystick cable. Notice the gray flat ribbon cable on the far right. Now in this case we're going to go ahead and mount the second case. So we're going to have a two player. So I've gone ahead and built up the other side. Now we're going to screw these M3 screws and nuts in good and tight. Don't use the screwdriver that I used here. Use a really good heavy-duty screwdriver and get it good and tight. I wound up having to open it up and tighten it down a little bit more. All right, so now we're going to put the side plate on. Same thing. Screw in the nut. And we'll put the left-hand side on. And make sure all the holes line up. Make sure you don't have any gaps. Make sure it's pressed down. Really good. Make sure all buttons work. That's very important. 
and then you go ahead and put the M3 screw up here, down here, put the nut in, and tighten it. I'm using a small power driver, but it hadn't been an issue. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and put the plate on on the far right. All right, now let's switch over to the USB plate in case you're interested in how to do that. Here I'm using a one foot cable and there's the female side. It just slides right in like that. It can slide in and out. So the way you can secure it a little bit better is using the USB tabs. It just slides in and now it can't slide out the back so that provides a little bit more support to make sure that it can't move towards the back. However, you do want to put some hot glue in here. Just use the holes that are there in the adapter. Just put a bunch of hot glue in there like so and then slide the USB cable back and then go ahead and put the tab back in push it all the way through and it should snap right in now we're going to add a little bit more hot glue around the back side and we're going to put another tab in like this and let it dry and then once it's dry go ahead and break them off and once it's dry you can do this and it holds it in place perfectly. Now we'll go ahead and install it on the right side. Be sure to install it to the right side of any of your segments. You don't want to put it on the left side or it might interfere with the joystick and we don't want that to happen. So it slides right in and you just again take the M3 screw and nut and go ahead and tighten it really good. And then we'll plug in the USB cable over here, which is feeding into the other side that has the Raspberry Pi. And then we'll put the case back on the top, or the control panel, and screw that in. Again, with the M3 screws and M3 nuts. Use the M3 screws and nuts on everything with the exception of the Raspberry Pi and the encoder. Raspberry Pi and encoder uses the M2. And look at this. We are finished with this. You can put rubber feed on the bottom if you want, which I wound up doing. And we're ready to test it out. We're going to go ahead and plug the HDMI cable in. Maybe. <laughs> All right, got it in. Now we're gonna plug the power in. And shortly it'll light up. There we go. And that looks good. Emulation station's fired up. And I got a few beta testers here. There's my son playing Street Fighter II with his buddy. Looks like they're having fun. I think we're in good shape. RetroPie is up and running with our new case, open cave. Be sure and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. We have more planned. Speaking of which, take a close look here. Notice the custom artwork. Hmm, future video.